Okay, so I would say like on average, 99% would find this problem difficult. Now, uh, you're looking at the problem, you're saying, no, it's fractions, it's arithmetic, I can do this stuff, and I, I'm probably pretty confident that you can, in fact, ultimately figure this out. But the problem is, or what I'm stating here, is that uh, many of you, the majority of people, would find this hard. And now, why would they find it difficult? Well, they're going to find it difficult because... They're looking at these denominators and are thinking to themselves, mm, first of all, they're not happy. They're dealing with fractions. They're like, fractions? I don't like fractions. And then second of all, I'm like, I'm looking at these denominators. I know I'm going to have to find the LCD. And I'm not quite sure how to do that, right? So like, how do I find the LCD? Uh, certainly, if you're dealing with nice, easy numbers, like let's say 2 thirds plus 1 over 7, you know, most of you out there could find the LCD, but now we're dealing with numbers a little bit more, you know, challenging. And these are pretty easy numbers. Imagine if I put in, let's say, uh, 405 and 856 or something like that. Then most people, their hair would start going like this, and then they would just be, let's see, maybe more along the lines of like, I'm not doing this problem. Well, listen, uh, you got to pay attention what I'm going to be doing here because you need to know how to find the LCD. Now, beyond that, um, I've done uh, multiple videos on finding the LCD. Finding the LCD is critical to adding and subtracting fractions, but there is another technique. It's a shortcut technique. Uh, I would definitely encourage all of you out there that are struggling with fractions to watch my videos on fractions in my pre-algebra playlist in my YouTube channel. Uh, I really give a lot of great tips there, but we're just going to focus in on uh, finding the LCD uh, for these two fractions. We're not going to even add the fractions, okay? We're just going to find the LCD. Now, of course, I would uh, like for you to find the LCD. Just kind of challenge yourself. Um, you know, if you have the, you know, a moment or two, pause the video and see what you can come up with. But um, whatever you do, don't guess, okay? Don't be like, I think this is LCD. Well, no, if you know how to do it, then find it, and then we'll, we'll check your work. But it's critical, okay, to your success not only in arithmetic, okay, in mathematics, but in algebra to know specifically how to find the LCD. So we'll cover this real quick. Again, I've done multiple videos on LCD because it is one of these sore uh, spots, weak areas for uh, a lot of students out there. And uh, now why is that? Just one little quick commentary. Well, because, you know, we have our calculators, right? We're, you know, not doing um, arithmetic as much as we used to do. Way back in the good old days when I went to elementary school in the 1970s. And that was pretty cool because I remember my first grade teacher smoking in the classroom. She was probably saying to herself, these kids are driving me crazy. And uh, yes, that's the way it was. But we did a lot of hand arithmetic back in those uh, days. And then uh, nowadays we got so much technology that we need to practice this stuff. Okay, so we're going to get into this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But effective, effectively, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. But I also have a ton of uh, courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for uh, the GED, HiSET task, AccuPlacer, Alex exam, CLEP exam, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, I can help you out. I have great test prep courses. Just go to my site. Check out my full course catalog. If I do not have what you're looking for, drop me a line and it will help you out the best I can. I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning uh, system. And then lastly, obviously, I help those of you that are just having a tough time in your math courses. Now, if you're serious about learning math, okay, if you're not serious, then ignore this part. But if you're serious about learning math, then you got to do this, okay? You got to take great math notes. So over decades of teaching mathematics, it's apparent to me that those students who take great notes, okay, I'm not talking about good notes, I'm talking about awesome notes, they always do well, okay? And the reverse is true. Those students who were like myself back in the 1980s, what was I doing? Well, I was talking to my friends and uh, scribbling and doing what, you know, certainly wasn't paying attention. You got to focus, okay? Uh, don't do that, okay? You, note taking is the one activity is going to keep you focused, all right? If you're not focused, 
uh, on anything that you're doing, okay, it could be math, it could be another course, it could be anything, then you're not going to be successful at it, okay? And the key um, is really taking notes. It's an activity that's going to force you to be engaged consistently. But uh, as you're improving in your notes, I can help you out with uh, my notes. So I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into the LCD here. So let's take a look at a couple quick examples. Let's say I had this. Let's do some warm-up problems. All right, what is the LCD here? Most of you probably uh, already know this. If you said 15, well, then in fact, I have to give you a little happy face and a check mark. Oh, that's a terrible happy face. We can do a little bit better. There you go. All right, so that's 15, right? Because, you know, we kind of know, we're thinking to ourselves, the LCD, isn't that like the number, the lowest number that both of these numbers can to, uh, divide into without a, a uh, denominator, okay? Or sorry, without a remainder. Yes, that's pretty good. All right, so how about this problem? What is the LCD? Okay, let's do another one. Uh, most of you are probably going to say, is the LCD, what is it? Drum roll. Well, if it's you said 10, I would have to give you another uh, check mark. Okay, very good, right? In fact, the LCD here is 10. Now, 10, okay, again, is the lowest number that both 10 and 5 go into evenly without any remainders, right? So that's conceptually... Most of you out there um, understand that. Now, before I move on to this problem, I'm going to show you this little shortcut technique. Remember this and watch some follow-up videos on this, okay? Uh, because this is critical. Yeah, and I don't, I don't want to uh, make sure, uh, let's say, I don't want you to walk away from this video without knowing this, this little hack, okay? It's one of my top videos and what I do. And here it is, right? So we know that the LCD for this particular problem is uh, 15, right? So I can change both denominators to five, like so. I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way, the way that you need to know anyways, right? So I'm gonna end up with nine over 15, and almost all of you out there know what I'm doing, right? So that's just five over 15. Now, when you have the common, when you have common denominators, okay, I could just write that one denominator and add the numerators here. So nine plus five, is 14. Okay, so the answer here is 14 over 15, and uh, that's the correct answer. Right? And this is the way that most people would do this. All right, and you need to know how to do uh, these fraction problems this way as well, but we needed to know what the LCD was. Right now, there's another way we can do this problem. Remember this, this is critical, and watch some more follow-up videos on on this uh, this kind of hack. Right, it's probably one of the more, most important little shortcuts that you'll need to know in arithmetic and in algebra, right? I'm pretty serious about that statement. I call it the bow tie method. You know, when people wear a tie, here's a little person, they have a little bow tie like that. All right, I call it the bow tie method because it looks kind of like a bow tie. So here it goes. It's gonna be this times this. It's always this way, okay? This number, the bottom right, the second fraction, multiply that way. That's gonna be what? Nine. Now this is an addition problem, so it's gonna be plus. Then I'm gonna multiply this way. Five times one is what? That's five. This little crisscross right here makes our denominator. I'm sorry, makes our uh, numerator, okay? Then we're gonna multiply across right here, five times three, that's 15, and that's it. So nine plus five, that is 14 over 15, we are done, okay? So same answer. Now the bow tie method here works on every addition and subtraction problem uh, with fractions, okay? The only disadvantage is sometimes you may not have the, a fully reduced fraction, okay? So you're gonna have to take that additional step, but if you for, forget how to find the LCD and you're like, I'm completely uh, lost, well, if you remember this technique, okay, and I've done additional videos on it to really you know, master this, then you'll be good to go for adding and subtracting fractions because typically, uh, that's where most people struggle with fractions is finding the LCD, but this little uh, technique here will bail you out every time. So remember this, okay? Um, I probably should try to link this video to uh, my additional videos on the LCD. Just look at my pre-algebra and algebra one playlist. You'll find a ton of them, okay? All right, so now let's get to our problem. Okay, so Matter of fact, let's see if you got the right LCD, okay? And we're not gonna add these guys up. So 40 and 85, what is the LCD? I'm gonna show you it right down here. 
the LCD is 680. Okay, it's 680. And if you got that right, then I must uh, give you another happy face with a check mark and an A+. Plus. It's very, very good. All right, how do you find the LCD? Well, we need to uh, prime factor each of the respective denominators. So here we have 40 and here we have 85. Just This is a quick review. And if you don't understand this, then you're going to need to follow through with more of my videos in my uh, pre-algebra playlist or maybe just sign up for my pre-algebra course. Okay, so what you want to do is prime factor each of these numbers. So you need to know how to factor. Let's take a look at 40. So 40 is the same thing as 4 times 10. And, but I can keep factoring. 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. And then 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5. Now I can't factor anymore because all these numbers are uh, prime factors. So 40 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2. We could write that as 2 cubed times 5. Okay. So the key to um, finding the LCD is you got to first prime factor the respective numbers involved, the respective uh, denominators. Okay, let's take a look at uh, 85. 85, pretty uh, simple. Uh, it turns out that 85 is just 5 times 17, and these two numbers here are prime. So 85 is equal to 5 times 17. So now once you have uh, the prime factors of each of the respective denominators, we can now uh, construct our LCD. And here's how it works, okay? What has to be in our LCD is... Um, each factor, each unique factor. So let's kind of work backwards here. So 17, and we have to look at all the factors between both of these numbers. So here we have 17, 5, 5, and 2 to the third power, which is, of course, 8. So 17, that has to be represented because that's a unique factor. Okay, we have to represent that. Now, uh, let's take a look at this 2 cubed. That's 8. Okay, that has to be represented at least once. Okay, now we have this 5 and this 5. So do I need to write 5 twice? Do I have to go 5 uh, times another 5 over here because this factor shows up um, twice? No, it does not. It's just uh, one single representation of a factor. So 5 is a factor, so we're going to write 5, okay? It shows up here, it shows up here, but it's okay. We just need to write one representation of the unique factor. So this is unique, that's unique, the, and uh, this, again, we already have it over here and then 17 is unique, okay? So this is going to construct our LCD. This is how you get the LCD. So two cubed times five times 17, of course, two to the third power here is eight. So eight times five times 17, if you were to do that in your little calculator or just do that by hand, you get 680, that is the LCD. So we would have to go over here and change each one of these denominators into 680 and then do all the additional steps uh, multiplying the, uh, the numerators and then changing that fraction such that the denominator is uh, 680. However, okay, uh, let's say you were like, okay, that's just like too much work. I'm going to use that guy's uh, trick, that little bow tie method, that YouTube guy. Uh, he says I can go like this times this, okay, uh, plus this times this, this times this. You would get the uh, you would get the correct answer. So if you went three times 85, I don't have my calculator in front of me, but then I added 40 times five right here over 40 times 85. I just did this math without even thinking about it. I would get the right answer. Okay, this fraction though, you likely are, are going to have to reduce. Uh, but if reducing fractions is uh, generally easier than finding the LCD. But you need to know how to find the LCD because when we work in algebra and we have variables and everything else, we're doing the same thing, okay? We're using the same concepts. We're just using variables and that little bow tie method. That still can help us out as well. But you simply need to know how to find the LCD. So if you got 680 as your answer, then I'd have to say... That's pretty awesome. And again, I'll give you back your happy face with an A+, plus, a 100%. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you three stars because most people, matter of fact, I'm going to give you four stars because most people, you know, they can do the LCD for basic easy numbers. But something like this, if you understood uh, this problem and you got the LCD, even if you did it a slightly different way, if you knew that you were doing the right thing to find the LCD, then that's very, very good. Okay. All right. So. Again, uh, most people find fractions difficult primarily 
because of the LCD, in my experience, okay, uh, adding and subtracting fractions, because you got to deal with that. So follow up um, and continue to practice that bow tie method. That's going to really uh, help you in some tough situations with dealing with, uh, with fractions. But if you like this little video right here, if this helped you out in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on uh, YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand videos. My goal, my mission is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you like my teaching style, I have a ton of videos basic to advanced math on my channel that I make these, uh, make these for you, okay? Of course, my best math help will be within my math help program, but there's a ton of help. The bottom line is this, no one should be uh, failing math. If you're doing your part, okay, that's why I ask you, if you're serious about improving math, start taking great notes, Talk to your teacher, get extra help, but if you need more instruction, there's a ton of resources out there. Hopefully, I can help you out with my YouTube channel or my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.